I'd like to show you an example of something that's a little bit difficult to do when looking at the matrix-based picture of quantum mechanics, but if we put everything on the block sphere, it makes perfect sense. In many experiments, uh, experimentalists can only rotate around two axes of the block sphere. That's the x-axis, which goes in this direction, and the y-axis, which is going this way. Um, many algorithms rely on uh, rotations around the z-axis, which is independent from these other two. And we'd like to see how to synthesize uh, z-rotations out of the tools that we have available, x and y rotations. Now, I happen to know the answer to this question, uh, and I can begin by writing down the matrices that describe the operations that we'd like to do. So here's z, and I'll say this is z theta. For those of you who are really in the know, this is e to the i z theta. Um, but if this doesn't make sense to you, then this is just a diagonal matrix with e to the i theta over 2 and e to the i, well, it's minus i theta over 2 on the diagonal, zeros off diagonal. Now we can see immediately that x and y rotations on their own uh, aren't going to give us this z rotation. So we can write out x theta and y theta, which are just rotations around these axes by angles theta, e to the i x theta over 2, e to the i y theta over 2, and this guy is equal to cosine of theta over 2 minus i sine of theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2 e to the i y theta over 2 is quite similar cosine theta over 2 sine theta over 2 minus sine theta over 2, cosine theta over 2. Now, uh, there's a product of these rotations, a y, an x, and a y, that will execute one of these z's. Let's take a look at it in matrix notation first. What I'm going to do is set theta, well, equal to pi by 2 for a y rotation. And that's going to give me 1 over root 2, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, minus 1, 1. y theta equal to minus pi by 2 is going to give me operations that look like 1 minus 1, 1, 1. You may recognize these as being quite similar to the Hadamard matrix that changes us from the computational basis into the plus minus basis. Um, and that's by design. Now let's take a look at what happens if we sandwich an x rotation about some angle theta with these two matrices, uh, which we lovingly call y90 and y minus 90, because they're 90 degree rotations. So we're going to get a so y pi by 2, x theta, y minus pi by 2 is equal to 1 over root 2, 1, 1 minus 1, 1, uh, cosine of theta over 2, minus i sine theta over 2, minus i sine theta over 2, cosine of theta over 2. Then we have another 1 over root 2, 1 minus 1, 1, 1. We multiply these through. So first off, I can take these two factors of 1 over square root of 2, make them a factor of a half, 1 minus 1, 1, 1. And then if I multiply these here, I get cos theta over 2 
plus i sine theta over 2, because these two minus signs cancel. So this is cos theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. Here I'll get cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. Here I'll get minus uh, cosine minus i sine, so that's minus cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. And then here I'll get cosine minus i sine, so cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. Continuing on with all this math, I can notice that these two elements are equal and opposite, so if I take 1 and minus 1, I'll get cosine plus i sine minus negative cosine plus i sine, which is simply 2 cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. Here I take a number at its opposite get 0. Here I can take these two numbers which are equal and add them. And that gives me cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. And if I take 1 and minus 1 and these two, I get 0 as well. It's a lot of matrix multiplication. Now, let's also use Euler's identity. We know that this is equal to e to the i theta over 2, and that this is equal to e to the minus i theta over 2 from arithmetic using complex numbers. And so we've managed to synthesize this z rotation around theta just by using x rotations and y rotations. So using a little bit of ket notation and some trigonometric identities, we can show that we can obtain universal control using only the tools that are available to the experimentalist. This is nice because it means we don't have to design new hardware. We can just put together operations that we already have in order to obtain universal control. But this is not as simple as it could be. There's a far easier way to see this, which we can do using the block sphere. The action of this sequence of unitary operations, y90, x around some angle theta, and then y minus 90, can be expressed in terms of matrices, but it's much easier to understand using the block sphere. If we write down a block sphere with the y-axis pointing out of the board, we can see the effect of a y90, a rotation around 90 degrees of the y-axis, is just turning the sphere sort of like a steering wheel so that the x-axis now faces down, and the z-axis is where the x-axis used to be. If we now apply a rotation around the x-axis, that's giving us a rotation around our old z-axis. And once we have that done, all we need to do is reverse the y90 with a y minus 90 to restore the orientation of our original axes, having picked up a phase on the z. And that's how we can synthesize a diagonal unitary, e to the i theta over 2, e to the minus i theta over 2, out of the operations to which experimentalists have access. A little bit of notation saves you a lot of hardware design.